does anybody else's body do this? Or like, does, uh, is it normal for like this noise to happen or this sensation? Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before or hi, welcome if you're new. My name's Mickey, I'm a therapist and we talk about therapy things on this channel. Today, we're talking about sexual shame because I think a large portion of our community are people who have deconstructed from like religion generally, but also purity culture um, and or are just seeking more empowerment around their sexuality and intimacy and self-pleasure and all of the things. So we're talking about that today. Um, I do a lot of whining about other people's really bad advice and while I stand by it because I think it's very important work. I think it's also equally as important to provide folks with some direction in terms of like, you know, doing the good work, like working on stuff and you know, whatever the fuck. So uh, we're talking about that today. Um, I have some tips, tips for you guys. So let's just get into the video. Tip number one is to call it what it is. I think especially for people who are deconstructing from religion, there is kind of this attitude from people who are still currently religious that like surviving something like purity culture is just like not that big of a deal. And like, oh, it's not that deep. And like, yes, it is. Um, I think it's really important to call things what they are and like be uh, validating of the reality that surviving something like purity culture and sexual shame is very much a trauma. I don't mean to say that for every person who's been involved with purity culture that you are inherently traumatized, but if you are experiencing um, a difficulty around these topics, it is entirely possible that you were traumatized. And if that's the case, you deserve to first of all label that accurately because it really goes a long way in terms of validating ourselves and like empowering us, but also you deserve um, to make that perspective shift so that you can grant yourself the time and the compassion passion, the space, the care that you deserve in trying to work through something like that, right? It's not something that we just like get over. It's not that simple. One of the things I tell my clients all the time is that we can logically understand something, um, but if we don't feel it in here, then it's not really going to help you yet. And so the work is in aligning what's happening up here with what's happening in here. And part of that is in calling your shit what it is, which in this case um, is likely a form of trauma that again, requires time and compassion and all of the things to like grab gradually, slowly, in a self-compassionate way, um, unpack and unlearn that. Tip number two is to seek out fact-based information. This comes with a caveat because I want to be super clear. There is a lot of information on the internet um, that seems fact-based, right? Um, especially from people like Bethany Beal comes to mind, um, who has gathered a group of sex experts to teach people about sex. But the thing that's important about this is that when we're trying to destigmatize a topic like sex or intimacy, for example, it's important that the fact-based information we're receiving is also inclusive and is also empowering and comes from this place of self-compassion and care and and kindness and not from a place of creating boundaries or or boundaries is a bad word but like like bounds around like oh this type of sex is okay i.e. like all sex is okay as long as it's within the confines of marriage like fuck that um especially when we talk about queer people when we talk about like our varying experiences with sex and intimacy having an inclusive resource that's also fact-based is really really gonna go a long way in terms of helping you learn and feel more comfortable in this like journey of trying to destigmatize along Along with this, I want to encourage people to remember that purity culture um, and religion generally perpetuates a lot of myths about sex and intimacy and self-pleasure, and we can carry those with us without realizing that we are. And so this process of deconstructing and having fact-based information is really helpful. Um, these types of myths run the gamut from like, taking birth control, causing breast cancer, which is not true by the way. And things like using sex toys uh, will mean that you never enjoy sex with a partner, which is also not true <laughs> by the way. Um, and so first of all, uh, purity culture creates a lot of fear and anxiety in us by teaching us these myths. And so having fact-based education helps us to unlearn that anxiety and also to make informed choices. It's a lot easier for us to make informed and conscientious and self-empowering choices about sex and intimacy when we actually know the truth about it. So again, I just really want to encourage people to seek fact-based information that's inclusive and empowering because it really is important. That is actually a perfect segue for us to talk about this week's sponsor, which is Beducated. I'm so excited to work with Beducated again. You guys know that Beducated is an online platform dedicated to all things sex and intimacy learning. I love them, especially because they have over 100 courses about sex and intimacy and all things related. When I say that there is genuinely a course for everybody on Beducated, I am so serious. I'll show you a list of the courses right now. There's literally something for everyone, especially as a 
queer, polyamorous, plus size, uh, gender non-conforming person. I find a lot of courses that are specifically relevant to me, which is really not an easy ask. One of my other favorite things about Beducated is that their content is explicit, but it's not pornographic. So as somebody who needs specific instruction when I'm trying to learn how to do something, I find it really helpful that they do actually give you real actionable advice, sometimes in video format that helps you to really put that advice into action. One of the courses that I just took was called Rediscovering Self-Pleasure. And not only did they have tips and tricks about self-pleasure in the course, but there was also a video demonstration of how to put those tips into action. And that's what I'm talking about. The advice is specific and actionable and explicit, but not pornographic. So it doesn't feel objectifying or yucky. So go click the link in the description, get your 40% off of the yearly pass with my code Mickey Adkins. Beducated also has a 14 day money back guarantee and a one day free trial. So if you're on the self-empowerment journey, um, I really want to encourage you to use this resource, give yourself the gift of pleasure this holiday season and show Beducated some love for showing me some love. Thank you so much to Beducated for sponsoring this week's video. Let's go ahead and hop back in. Okay, that brings us to tip number three, which is to remember that all pleasure is morally neutral. The thing that I think is important to remember about uh, self-pleasure and sex and intimacy, and especially like deconstructing from sexual shame, is that all pleasure is like an umbrella term, right? Like sexual pleasure is a thing that's underneath this umbrella term of pleasure generally. Um, and I know that purity culture really sells us this message that uh, sexual pleasure and self-pleasure is a thing that's like off in the corner by itself. And like, that's not true, right? That's not true or helpful. The truth is that pleasure is just a part of the human experience. Um, and for some of us, we will feel a draw or a pull or an interest towards sexual pleasure. So practice uh, reminding yourself that this viewpoint that sexual pleasure is some sort of like taboo thing that's like off hidden in a closet somewhere, that's an invention of purity culture. The reality is that enjoying, um, you know, like comfy pajamas or like having a really nice scented candle or uh, watching a funny or, or cute movie, those are all forms of pleasure, right? Those are all ways that we can incorporate pleasure into our lives and like love on ourselves a little bit. And so along with that, masturbating, sex, intimacy, uh, again, either with ourselves or with a partner, that's all just part of this larger picture of incorporating and pursuing pleasure as people. The reality is that as human beings, uh, we're wired <laughs> to seek pleasure in some form or fashion. And again, not all people will experience an interest or a desire for sexual uh, pleasure, either with yourself or someone else. But if you do, I want to encourage you to remember that that's just one of the categories that exists in this larger umbrella of pleasure generally. Along with that, pursuing pleasure and wanting to prioritize pleasure in your life is not a hedonistic or embarrassing <laughs> desire. It's not a sign that you are some, you know, like animalistic person. Uh, the truth is that pleasure is a way that we can love on ourselves and also create care and compassion in our relationships. And so if we're not stigmatizing, you know, um, chocolate chip cookies or scented candles, we shouldn't be stigmatizing masturbation or sexual pleasure either. Tip number four is to remember that purity culture is about control, particularly male power and control. I think for most people, it's not a secret that purity culture originated within this religious view that's very patriarchal and that really prioritizes both male pleasure and male control um, and also carries a lot of really harmful beliefs about sex. For example, the notion that real sex is penis and vagina sex and that sex is finished after male ejaculation are both things that while they're not exclusive to purity culture um, are still very much a problem within that lens and it's important for us to challenge that because reclaiming uh, sexual autonomy, sexual empowerment is not simply about doing sexy things. It's about making a perspective shift that allows you to feel empowered and to challenge this feeling of selfishness and shame that will oftentimes show up for people um, enough that you can create space to really ask yourself the question, what is it that I want? What are the things that I'm interested? What does pleasure really look like for me outside of this view that sex is about and for um, men and, and male ejaculation and male arousal? Again, I wanna be super clear that this problem with centering the male experience um, is not something that's exclusive to purity culture. It is very much a problem that exists in a larger patriarchal context um, that does also happen in secular circles. But again, for the purpose of this video, it's very important to honor that purity culture was developed and was and is still upheld um, in religions that do center this very patriarchal view about life. So 
Along with that, I want to encourage you to remember that sexual empowerment is not synonymous with promiscuity, um, but rather about having a lack of shame when advocating for yourself. This is what I mean when I say that decentering um, the patriarchal view that purity culture has about sex will oftentimes help to create space for you to ask these questions about your own pleasure and what you want. So I think that's a perfect segue for tip number five, which is to start slowly and ideally with yourself, like your own body. When we talk about experiencing sexual pleasure on on you know, the recovery side of purity culture um, or like after deconstructing purity culture, the temptation for a lot of people is just gonna say, I, you know, I'm just gonna have sex with other people or like, I'm just gonna say, I am not doing this anymore and so therefore I'm better. And while I resonate with this obviously as a human being, um, it might feel a lot more approachable for people to do a lot of that discovery work in private. We've talked about this ad nauseum on the channel because I have a lot of issues with the way that purity culture <laughs> structures people's first experience with partnered uh, intimacy because the on-ramp time for that is so short, right? Going from zero to 60 um, in one evening where like we've never been alone or or seen each other naked to all of a sudden being inside of somebody is really a tall ask and it's like genuinely traumatizing for some people. So I want to encourage you to start slow. Some of the resources that I recommended in this video are great for um, structuring this journey of noticing what does pleasure feel like for me in my own body. And it's also a lot easier to do that when we don't have an audience. I think we've talked on the channel before, I'll put it up here or here, I don't know where it goes. I'll put it up there somewhere. That we oftentimes view sex, especially for people who were assigned female at birth, we view sex as a performance. <laughs> Life really is a performance, but sex especially <laughs> carries a lot of performative energy because we're taught that we're supposed to be visually appealing and we're a thing to be consumed. This is why practicing unlearning sexual shame in private is a lot safer for people. It feels a lot safer um, because we don't have to think about what do I look like right now, right? Is my face weird? Is my hair weird? Do I smell funny? Um, none of that matters because it's just you in your own body and you really want to try to ground into present moment and like the actual sensations that you're experiencing. This can be as simple as like, what does it feel like for me to brush my own fingers down my arms or exploring uh, what the difference of sensation is for you in like different types of sex toys. Like we can sort of run the gamut here in terms of like beginner to like like advanced, I guess. But above all else, I want to encourage you to take things slow and to start with yourself because first of all, that's allowed. But second of all, it's something that, again, when we're really being honest about what purity culture is for some folks, which is a sexual trauma, it will take time and that's okay. You're not on a timeline. You don't have to be uh, like ready or done in any particular timeline. While I look at my notes for this next tip, I wanna remind you guys, if you haven't yet, go click the link in the description, get your 40% off the annual pass for Beducated. Uh, show them some love for showing me some love in today's video. Okay, that brings us to tip number six, which is to talk about it. Normalizing something means not making it a conversation that only exists in hushed tones or in quiet corners, right? I'm not saying that you have to have a conversation about uh, you know, prostate milking with your family over Thanksgiving dinner, but I am saying that having open and honest communication with your friends and family, maybe not your family, uh, <laughs> having open conversations with your friends, your safe people um, about your journey, about what you're experiencing, about questions that you have can be a wonderful resource. We oftentimes view these conversations about sex as something that has to be sexy and that's not true. The truth is that having a community of people who can an answer and or ask or offer support about questions you have about like, does anybody else's body do this? Or like, does uh, is it normal for like this noise to happen or this sensation or for this experience? Or like, I felt this way when this thing happened. That's perfectly normal and okay. And conversations about sex don't have to be sexy. I think that's a really important distinction to make because again, sex is something that a lot of people will experience or resonate with. And having open discourse about it is very much going to help with destigmatizing um, and making it a normal thing to talk about. Okay, that's the short list that I have for you today. Uh, I know that there's probably gonna be further follow-up questions. I do wanna be super clear. I can't answer anybody's specific questions because this is broad strokes education and learning. This is not therapy. It's not replacement for therapy. There are links in the description if you want to find a therapist of your very own. Uh, however, if you guys want me to make more content about this, I am happy to do that. I have lots of thoughts and feelings about uh, sexual liberation um, and empowerment, obviously. So uh, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to talk about this uh, further, because I'm happy to do that. In the meantime, if you like the video, like the video, uh, you can subscribe to the channel. We do talk about stuff like this, and we also do a fun pop culture moment. So I'd love to have you stay and then share the video to help the channel 
to grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.